Hello everyone, for this video we're going to talk about angles formed by secants and tangents. Of course, let us have our learning target for this video. I can solve the problems related to angles formed by secants and tangents. First, let us recall what a secant line. So, secant line, it's a line that intersects the circle at exactly two points. Now, let us have our sample illustration. Here, as you can see, we do have line CD. It intersects the circle O at exactly two points, which are point C and point P. Okay. First, we have a theorem 112. This is called the intersecting secants or tangent exterior theorem the intersecting secants or tangents exterior theorem so it says that if a tangent and a secant two secants or two tangents intersect in a point in the exterior of a circle then the measure of the angle form is equal to one half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. So first of all, let us understand based here in our um, description for theorem 112. Uh, so we can have three various cases. So first, it might be a combination of a tangent and a secant. So let us have our illustration here. As you can see, we do have circle E and we do have tangent line or tangent segment BD and a secant which is segment AD. So if we are asked to find the measure of uh, this angle form at the exterior point of our given illustration, then what are we supposed to do is simply get half the difference of the measures of its intercepted arcs. Okay, so aside from this, we can also have another case and that is two secants. So we can have this. So still, if we are asked to find the measure of uh, the angle formed here at the exterior point, then the formula that we are supposed to use is still the same, one half the difference of the measures of its intercepted arc. So here in this case, our intercepted arcs are arc MN and arc RO. Get the difference of this and uh, after that, get half of it. So we can get the measure if the angle form at the exterior point and lastly the third case is we can have two tangents so here in our illustration we do have our tangent segment ag and tangent segment tg so same process if you are asked to find the measure of it, the angle form at the exterior point of the given illustration then same formula but of course, to simplify this, you can take note of the formula by simply using this one. Measure of the angle form at the exterior point is equal to one half. The difference of the intercepted arc 1. So, intercepted arc 1 that refers to your bigger arc and uh, deducted by the measure of your smaller arc. Okay, I do know you will be able to understand it more using our example. Okay, so we have here used the given measures to solve for x. So, of course, let us rewrite the formula that we've uh, created a while ago. So, to find the measure of the angle form, which is this time we represent as x. So, how are we going to solve for this? So, a measure of the angle form, so let's represent it as x, then equals 1 half the difference of our intercepted arc 1, the bigger arc, which is 140 degrees, minus our um, smaller arc, so it intersects this one, so arc BD, which is 80 degrees, and thus we can have... Uh, Simplify it first, 140 minus 80, so we would have 40 degrees. And lastly, what is 1 half of 40 degrees? Thus, we have 20 degrees. So therefore, the measure of this angle BAD 
is equal to 20 degrees. So as it says that. Next example we have here in this case. So the angle form, um, the measure is given already, which is 38 degrees. So um, don't worry, let's just make use of our formula and uh, manipulate the formula correctly. So measure of the angle form, it's given already. So let us write it here, 38 degrees equals one half. Then measure of the bigger arc, which is this one, arc CE, which is 120. Okay, and then deducted by the smaller arc, which is we don't know yet. So here, as you can see, we are supposed to simplify this one 120 minus x, but we cannot deduct this one or we cannot perform the process here since they are unlike terms. Now, um, my next thing to do is maybe let us eliminate the fraction it here so that we can um, somehow make it simplified form so how are we supposed to eliminate the fraction here in our equation so just look for the lcd or let's say what is the reciprocal of one half and let's multiply it to both sides of the equation and that is reciprocal of one half is two so multiply it to both sides of our equation so we have here so multiply by 2 and now let's start at the left side 2 times 38 we do have 76 degrees equals and then here in this case actually um, do not get confused we are supposed to multiply only 2 with the 1 half itself 2 times 1 half so we would have 1 and we all know if we are going to multiply any number to 1 it would be identical so there's no need for us to write the 1 into here and just simply copy the remaining expression which is 120 minus x okay and now so let us just combine the like terms so we would have maybe the negative x will adjust so um we are using the shortcut so we are going to transpose negative x will become positive x and we would have 120 degrees minus 76 degrees and therefore we would have 44 degrees for our smaller intercepted arc so if you're going to check so just simply 120 minus 44 it's 76 and one half of 76 it's 38 so therefore it's correct okay so for our next theorem this is theorem 113 this is called tangent point secant theorem do not get confused maybe you might be wondering miss um a while ago we do have a combination already of tangent and secant and uh, we applied theorem 112 there um, in our first concept we are um, focusing on the angle form at the exterior point but this time we are going to focus on the angle form at the point of tangency so later on you would uh, see the difference through our illustration Okay, so what is tangent point secant theorem first? The measure of an angle form by a tangent in a secant tron at the point of the contact or point of tangency is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. As you can see, now our focus is here. The angle form at the point of tangency we're in, we do have the secant that intersect our tangent segment at the point of tangency. Okay, so now let's say, for example, you are going to find the measure of this, of this angle, angle ERB. So for you to find out the measure of this, based on theorem 113, you just simply get half the measure of its intercepted arc. What is our intercepted arc here? So as you can see, our intercepted arc is arc ER. Okay, so that means you should know the measure of this arc so that you can get half of it and that would definitely the measure of this angle ERB. So let's give 
an example angle measure for this. So let's say arc ER is 170. So what do you think is the measure of angle ERB? Of course, you just simply get what is one half of 170. And thus, measure of angle ERB is 85 degrees based on the given intercepted arc. Okay, so as easy as this one. So let us have another example. So find the measure of angle ABC. So you take note guys. So which angle are you supposed to find out? So we have here angle ABC. So this one. So that means you are supposed to know the measure of this arc ADB. And uh, you are lucky enough because it's already given measure of arc ADB or BDA is 250 degrees. Therefore, to find the measure of angle A, B, C, you just simply get one half measure of um, arc B, D, A, which is 250 degrees. Therefore, measure of angle A, B, C is equal to 125 degrees. So, as easy as this one. Okay, another example we do have, find the measure of angle, what? Find the measure of angle EFG. Okay, so since you are going to find the measure of this, you are supposed to know the measure of its intercepted arc, which is arc EHF. So what's the measure of this arc? So, as you can see, our given arc is not the measure of its intercepted arc, but rather the opposite arc or the other part of the given circle, which is arc EF, and that is 110. Okay, though this is not the intercepted arc still, this would help you to identify the measure of the arc EHF. So, since it's 110, you deduct it from 360 and you would know that this is 250 degrees. Okay, now, to find the measure of angle EFG, so you just simply get one half the measure of arc EHF, which is 250 degrees again, and therefore, your answer would be measure of angle EFG is 125 degrees as well. Okay, so one more example. So here, find the measure of angle 1. So what have you observed with angle 1? So it intersects the, the semicircle of the given circle X. We all know a semicircle measures 180 degrees now so to get the measure of angle one you just simply get again one half applying theorem 113 one half the measure of its intercepted arc which is 180 degrees therefore our final answer the measure of angle one is equal to 90 degrees and uh, we're done did you learn about Theorem 112 and 113? Okay, so thank you so much for watching. See you on our next video lesson.